Let's talk about something you're screwing up. I can guarantee you, if you're watching this video, you're screwing up. Um, you can actually Google an article I wrote for Apple. It's called Methodology to Protect Your Data. It's a nice little article. Here's what you're screwing up. And if you actually make a really good analogy, people are like, oh, that makes sense. Um, if Point number one, if you are not using <clears throat> the data, and talk about big data, right? Something over like 100 megabytes. If you're not using the data on your computer, this be desktop or laptop, at least once every three weeks, it should not be on your computer, right? Well, I got no problem. I got like a... A two terabyte internal drive on my... It doesn't matter. I don't care how much storage you got. Listen, the tattooed schmuck, a.k.a. the tattooed Uncle Fester here, has got hundreds of hard drives, including a small little mountain of solid-state drives, which are really, really expensive. Not like expensive like they used to be. If you're not using the data on your computer, at least every three weeks, then you are screwing up. You ever seen someone has a desk and it's got, like, piles of crap that they haven't even touched in like a year and like, man, what a slob! What a slob. It chokes down your computer. It causes countless issues. I could actually spend like an hour long video talking about the issues it creates. Why? It's just sitting in there doing nothing. No, it creates issues. It creates issues for migration, salvation of your data. Like, well, I make it hard. I make a, a, a time machine, but time machine backup is uh, what uh, a novice uses. The people, even the guy himself, who's, he died, and I knew him, his name was Pondini, he actually wrote the programming for Time Machine for Apple. Even he himself made a huge list of the countless thousands of errors and issues related to Time Machine. One issue, of course, being is that if it runs out of space, it will overwrite data. It doesn't care how important it is or is not. Time Machine is not bootable. There's a long, long list of the issues associated with Time Machine. You should be doing two things. If it's not being used every three weeks on your computer, it should not be on your computer. Your computer is exactly like your workspace, right? Okay, it's meant to be a place for working. It's not a storage device. A computer is not, sure it is, my computer's got uh, 500 gigs of solid state storage, it's got a fusion drive, it's got a two terabyte. I bought my computer and I upgraded it and I opened up that sucker and I stuck a, a four terabyte spinning hard drive and I got four terabytes of space. No, I don't care how big the storage in your computer is. You should not have all that data on your computer. Your computer is not a, a, a data storage device. You could actually ask some of the wisest minds that literally wrote the book on data storage backups versus archives. They'll tell you no computer is a storage device no matter how big your hard drive is. You should keep that stuff off of your computer. Well, that creates a problem because when I go to see that data, you've got to plug it in. If you're not using it every three weeks, it shouldn't be on your computer. You know, you know how you, back in the days before computers, like they had people had crap that they worked at their desk was clean and they were an intelligent person. They had a nice clean desk with a small stack of papers that they used and referenced and everything else was in a file cabinet off of their desk, right? That is the exact same thing with computers. You should not be having, your, no computer is a data storage device. Will you actually migrate from one computer to the next? And I've got seven computers. I used to build computers, fix computers, which you don't actually fix, do component level uh, fixing. You just do, you know, like main board replacement, hard drive replacement. Everybody also, too, should download a free program called Super Duper. It's for Mac or uh, Windows. What it does is let you clone, and it is bootable. You know how important that is? In other words, if your computer crashes, like you're in Europe and you have a bootable copy, I get also, too, this is what is a huge difference. You make a bootable copy of uh, your computer. If, you, if it is cluttered with shit you don't use, then it makes making a new bootable, this is another issue why you don't keep a bunch of crap on your computer. It uh, makes a, making a bootable, because it takes a long time, right? If you got too much crap on your computer, making a bootable clone of your computer creates issues. When you travel, say for instance, someone stole your computer and it's password protected, so they can't get in there, you're not really worried about them stealing the data. That is, if you got a Mac, that's not a problem. If you got a Windows machine, you're screwed. Let's say it dies on you. And you're like, yeah, I need to buy another computer. I'm in Europe on a business trip. It died, you know, you stepped on it, you know, you pissed on it, something happened to it, right? If you have a bootable clone, 
then you could get that same computer or a likewise machine with the same operating system, plug it into the port, and you boot off of that. So until you get home or return to wherever you want, or you could actually copy all the data since it is a bootable clone. You just choose when you open up that computer startup, you say, I want to boot from this uh, connected external hard drive, or in this case, solid state drive. All your data is there. It's like nothing ever happened to your computer. Everybody should have a bootable clone. You should not keep, uh, ever, make the mistake of thinking your computer is a data storage device because it's not. Okay? A storage device, the keyword there is storage. Same, same way in the back of the old days, like a desk was a desk. And what you did at your desk is you worked. And a storage, you know, you store data. You know where you store data? It had a filing cabinet right over here beside your desk. That's, that's where crap was stored that you weren't using every week or two or three. You should treat your computer the same way. Here's another mistake, and I forgot to grab it off the back of this computer. You see this? Anyway, it's one of these, uh, it's called a, uh, a tough drive. Uh, I got this for free. You know, it's got these rubber bumpers, and I've taken a few of them apart. Man, I got some nice industrial Velcro holding this sucker on. This is funny. This is where you should make... Yeah, there we go. The hook and loops. That's what I should have said, hook and loops. Here we go. Lacey. Lacey doesn't make hard drives. What's inside of this is a Seagate drive. Man, I got a lot of hook and loops on the back of this. This is attached here. You see people recommend... This is so stupid. And trust me, I am the god of hard drives and solid state drives. And by the way, everybody should buy one of these. I'll tell you what it is in a second. You should not buy these. The only reason I own one of these, and someone made a comment in a video like a year ago, say, well, I see one of those in the back of your iMac there. It's like, you asshole, you got one. I got it for free. Okay? This is a spinning hard drive. The only thing that's inside is you got a rubber bumper and this cheap metal box, and they charge a fortune for these. This is a real gimmick, by the way. You take this rubber bumper off, you open up this uh, stupid, cheap little tin box, and what is inside is a conventional hard drive with four rubber bumpers on it, okay? It doesn't matter all these rubber bumpers that are around this hard. It's just as fragile as any other damn hard drive, especially if it's spinning. Like someone will be in a taxi cab or something, it'll be taking a train ride and they've got this hooked up to their laptop and it's just, you know, clickety, clackety, clickety. Yeah, it doesn't matter because these rubber bumpers don't protect the, uh, the heads and the platters from head crash and other, uh, other uh, corruption from uh, being moved and jostled around. You should never buy... I see people all the time recommend this crap. Hey, you got a laptop. It's a perfect travel laptop for storing your pictures. Screw that. All those people are morons, okay? I'm the god of hard drives. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hard drives. I love hard drives. But I'll be the first person to tell you, don't buy a spinning-ass hard drive for your portable device. What you do, and this is a 500 giger. Right now, they're running... Uh, cheapest I've found them for is 95 bucks, but they average about 100 bucks. A 500 giger. They actually have them up to uh, 2 terabytes, and those are $400. The one terabyte jobbies are uh, 198, so you don't save any money there. But here's, uh, the, this is a USB-C device, but it actually comes with an adapter that lets you choose either uh, USB, conventional USB-A, or USB-C. So all you have to do is just uh, take this, you know, and it comes with this, okay? So if you don't have a USB-C computer, in other words, you're ro rocking some old friggin' dinosaur, you still have compatibility with that. Grab one of these. The reason I have a loop on this is because it's easy to lose this since it's black. And also, too, this lets me, if I'm in some place where I'm worried about my computer being stolen, I hang this around my neck and put everything right here. I partition this. I can make this, A, a completely bootable clone of my uh, laptop, and B, a storage device, hello, of my important data. My important data, I've got a lot of data. Man, i got a lot. My important data, believe it or not, is about 300 gigabytes. That's a lot. i got a lot of important data, believe it or not. i got hundreds and hundreds of hard drives. Literally. Man, i got a lot of hard drives. But I would never recommend someone to buy a conventional hard drive. And both of these suffer from ferromagnetic depolarization. It doesn't matter if it's a spinning hard drive or solid state drive. Um, obviously, it doesn't suffer from uh, shock and whatnot like a conventional hard drive, but as far as ferromagnetic depolarization, i.e. bit rot, you have no difference on a solid state drive. So don't buy one of these. I ever see all these photography, you know, like uh, some Australian person that I will leave on that. Oh, mate, you should go on. You get you on B&H fat and board one of these. Hey, crikey.
Like, no, you don't. You don't buy one of these things. You don't. So, well, solid state drives are still expensive, Mike. Not so much. You know, it's hundred dollars for five hundred gigabytes. I mean, how many damn pictures are you gonna take on that one month or one week trip? You know, five hundred gigabytes. You got a problem with that? Get yourself a one terabyte or buy another five hundred gigger. Yeah, are you gonna fill up a terabyte of pictures? You might. You might. You know. If you can afford that one month trip, then I can guarantee you that you can damn well afford two or three of these at 100 bucks a pop for 500 gigs. So shut the hell up. I can't afford that crap. So you may get this straight. You're going to go on a one month vacation through Europe. Really expensive, but you can't afford one or two of these. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Give me a break. Really? Um, yeah, just don't make the mistake everybody else does. Because you need to download Super Duper. It's one word, Super Duper. It's free. Everybody, you, all the professional uh, Mac guys, and it doesn't matter if it's Mac or Windows, they all use it for making bootable clones, okay? Let me repeat something here that I might edit out later. <clears throat> Time machine is for pussies. Time machine is for pussies. <laughs> Professionals don't use time. Even the guy that, that created, co-developed, Time machine. He warned everybody about all the problems with Time Machine and he co-created it. Did I, did I make that perfectly clear to people? Time Machine is not a means by which to store data. And your computer, if you're storing your data on your computer, you're an idiot. I got multiple, and it's okay to be an idiot. You know, as long as people learn, it's okay to be an idiot. You know, I don't mind stupid people. I just don't mind, I mind people that refuse to learn. I don't want to learn that crap. It's like, you don't want to learn? Okay, you just want to remain stupid, right? I like learning stuff. You know, you should only stop learning when you kick off and die. That's when people should stop learning. Um, I learned something new today. A guy called me and told me about how to do something on Instagram that I didn't know how to do. I was like, oh, I learned something today. Because I never delve deep into Instagram. I Velcro. Oh, I use hook and loops. <laughs> put these together I almost said the V word almost said the V word and put these together and I said the orange cords for hanging around your neck but not hanging yourself but hanging around your neck <laughs> yeah but don't buy these things on every YouTube channel out there they keep showing this and there's only one hard drive that looks like this is Lacey it's a Lacey hard drive girlfriend there ain't no such thing as a Lacey hard drive it's just the company Lacey buys Seagate hard drives by the thousands they put in you open this up it says Seagate hard drive all the photography channels that keep recommending this to people, you're an idiot. It's not my opinion that you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Okay? I know a lot more about you, this topic than you do, meaning those other photography channels. Ah, you should buy one of these things. You know, it's a perfect storage place for your pictures. No, it's not. No, it's not. If you want to talk about perfect storage, you can buy yourself an NAS, or what I prefer is a JBOD. Which is, means just a bunch of disks. You got this tower, it's got empty slots, and you buy some three and a half inch conventional hard drives, some of the good Western Digital Black ones, or some of the newer uh, server grade hard drives. You plug it in there, three terabytes, three ter or six terabytes, four terabytes. You should actually, because of the uh, motor that spins them up, you should actually never buy a hard drive above four terabytes. Okay? It's the spin up that uh, causes those motors to prematurely fail because they're all the same little weak-ass motors. What fails on the big ones is they got so many friggin'-ass platters in them, when the motor tries to spin those platters up, it goes, <laughs> there's too many platters to spin up, and so the motor and that hard drive croaks. <clears throat> croaks a little too prematurely. Yeah, JBOD, got like five slots, depending on the size of the tower. Like, drop in a four terabyte or a four terabyte, or you can mix and match them. Network attached storage, no, nah, not a big fan. I'm a fan of JBOD. Look that up. Just a bunch of disks. That's what it stands for. Yep, 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 yep. So here's where I could definitely say I know more than every top 20 YouTube photography channel combined when it comes to data storage. And I certainly know the difference between an archive versus a backup, yeah, versus a bootable clone, blah, blah, blah. Everybody, if you don't know what the hell a bootable clone, here's another thing. Here's the wonderful thing about bootable clones, girlfriend. Are you listening freaking closely? Here's the wonderful shit about a bootable clone. You could uh, tell your computer, I'm going to boot from this hard drive. You reboot, and what it does is it boots off of a bootable clone, which is a copy of your computer. Yeah? 
And then you got like some freaky deaky software you want to install, but you know, it might jack with your computer. It's like, ah, it's called sandboxing. Yes, 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 sandboxing. And so you start screwing around with your computer without actually screwing around with your computer. What you're doing is you are testing it virtually. It's not virtual, but you're testing it on you know, a quickly redoable bootable clone. Everybody should have at least two bootable clones. One stored in like a fireproof box somewhere. You want to get up and running really quick? Screw Time Machine. Time Machine sucks ass. Make a bootable clone. Always two copies. Refresh your bootable clones. Every, it depends on what your workload's like. Every month, basically. Yeah. And the more crap you got jammed on your computer unnecessarily, the tougher it is, the longer it takes to make a bootable clone. Because you're, you're making copies of redundant BS that you're not using every week or two or three. That crap don't need to be on your computer. It should never be on your computer. Okay, girlfriend? Okay, I made that perfectly clear. At least I think I did. Nothing I said in this video is refutable. Nothing whatsoever. But go ahead and try if you think you can. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, you could always click the link below because I don't peddle crap. I'm not trying to get rich off of, you know, selling or recommending. It's like if you go and buy one of these, I don't have an affiliate link for this. It's called a SanDisk Extreme. It looks just like this. It's got that little orange hole up in it. I don't make a dime off of whatever you buy. So any donation would be greatly appreciated. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Just stop using your computer as a storage device because it damn well is not. Okay? Okay. Bye.